Hi, I'm Kim Hopkins and I'm an international award-winning actress and model for over 50 years. That's who I am. But first, I'd like to ask you, what do you think people's first impression of you is? Oh, my, their first impression of me? Well, I get two different kind of things. Some people think I'm like quirky and like weird and goofy, and other people think that I'm a snobby bitch. So it's one or the other. So what would, those are two completely drastic differences. <laughs> yeah. So tell me the scenarios where the drastic comes in verse and then we'll go to the quirky exciting stuff so yeah I don't know what that is exactly I think it's usually when when people first meet me because I tend to be really quiet at first especially in big crowds I like to check out what's going on and see who's what's going on but yeah usually that's if I'm quiet just like I don't know I've just had people say really strange that people think I'm a bitch and I'm like I'm so not a bitch I'm like totally the opposite like, I'll hug everybody. I love everybody. I'm like, super friendly and weird. So. But you just kind of are reserved at first. You take it all in. You kind of get your bearings, see what the situation is, and then we kind of go make friends, right? Yeah. I totally get that. That's how I am. I, yeah, definitely I get that. I like to um, just kind of see what the vibe is, kind of see who and pick my spots, and while I'm getting comfortable. I don't exactly. think there's anything wrong with that. Exactly. Me either. I don't know. So, why would you call yourself quirky? I am quirky. <laughs> I'm just kind of, I don't know, I like different things and I'm goofy. I don't know. What makes you goofy? My sense of humor is a little different than most people. <laughs> and um, Like I'll just try anything, I'll do anything, I kind of go along with whatever. I'm just, like I just like to have fun and enjoy life. So I think that most people aren't like that. They're not adventurous. Like when rollerblades came out I wanted rollerblades and when I saw kite boards I was like "Ooh, I got a kite board yeah so I went out and bought everything and learned how to do that real quick and then went yeah that's not a good idea <laughs> okay so what happened that made it not a good idea now I need to know oh that was a bad day um I went out it was kind of choppy and I was just with my boyfriend it was just the two of us and the wind kind of picked me up i think i went about 20 feet in the air and then it slammed me back down onto the water and i lost the board for a few seconds and the kite went down then i got back up and it was just kind of like bop 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 just throwing me back against the water for about 100 yards and he was running down the beach and people were like look at her go look at her go and i was like yeah no i mean i thought i was gonna die because it was knocking the wind out of me every time yeah it was bad really bad that was the last time never went back out there again yeah. So you said in your introduction that you were an actress and an international model. Do I hear that right? Yeah. Yep. So how did we get started doing all that? That would have been my, well, I was with my mom, but Bert Stern, who was a really big photographer, found me on the subway in New York and said, that little girl should be a model. And so I was on the cover of McCall's and I was an Ivory Bay. I was the top top model in New York until I was about 12 years old. And then we moved here. And my mom said no more because I called her by her first name and she didn't like that. And then when I was 18, I started modeling. I went back to it and then I never looked back. Went to Mexico, went to Japan, went to Europe. So yeah, traveled all over the world modeling. It was really fun. How exciting. It was. I don't, I don't think it was exciting back then. It was just like what I did and I just had... You know, when you're in your 20s, just the experiences are just, you know, they come at you and you just do what you're doing. I wasn't excited, but I was enjoying it. And I really did get to see a lot of the world that I probably wouldn't have gotten to see. And from different um, perspective. So it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. That's quite an opportunity, especially in your 20s. Like you said, that that was going to be my comment was to see all those places and do all those things. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. In, uh, in Mexico, we went to really, like, really out of the way places. Like, Tekeski Tango, like places that I would, and Guatemala, I mean, and in Japan to Mount Fuji, like places that I probably never would have gone in my lifetime. But some of the places were really exotic and like off the beaten path. Like you would never, even if you lived there, you would never go to those places. So it was pretty cool. Well, with all of that, what is something that would surprise people to know about you? Um, kind of a homebody. I'm just, you know, yeah, 
I like to be at home. I love to cook and take care of people. And I do. I, I take care of my girlfriend's mother. And I was taking care of her father. He passed away December 5th. And I, he was in my arms when he passed away. Um, but I do help people with hospice. Um, I don't get paid for it, but I happen to know about those things. So people call me and ask me, and then I go through the end of their life with them. That is a beautiful gift. It really is. It, it really is. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, and almost everybody that I've been with at the end, they're ready to go and they want to be at home and watching and feeling that energy just leave their body and knowing that that's not them. You know, I mean, it's, it's a different thing to know it, you know, from an outside perspective, but to actually be with people when that energy leaves and realize that it's just the shell of them and that their energy is going to be with you. I feel like I have Bob's ashes on my um, bookcase over there, some of his ashes his daughter gave me. Um, I just feel like people are still here. You know, it, it makes me feel better about that. What got you into doing that? I don't know. You know, it was just one of those things that like, um, actually, you know what? I was a personal trainer for a little while. I was a personal trainer and massage therapist for a while. And one of my clients knew that I had gone to school for physical therapy and he had hit the, the wife called me, the husband had a, a stroke and she called me and she asked me if I would help with him getting back to his normal self. And so I spent a year with him and I learned even more. I learned about vision therapy and I learned about occupational therapy. And so I ended up like working six hours in the morning and four hours at night with this guy until I got him up walking and the doctors were like, who are you? And I was like, um, I'm just doing what intuitively happens. And so from him, he told other people, then friends of mine heard I was doing it and one of my friends had MS and she said, can you help me now? So it just became this progression of people who were like, I know you're an actress, but can you help me with this? And I was like, sure. And I love it. I love helping people and I love watching people get better. So compassionate. <laughs> You left that out of your intro. <laughs> that is, I don't know how to describe that other than compassionate. That really, and, and a gift. Like that is truly a, a sacred time for people um, and their families. Yeah. And to, to have that desire to be there and be there for others is huge. And you know, you said that people say, oh, I know you're an actress, but can you help me with this? And you talked about wanting to be there for others. It's all about connection. Yeah. And that's for you on and off the screen. And I think that's beautiful. Thank you. I do too. I really, I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool. So since we're talking about connection mm -hmm. and you're talking about this compassionate side of the connection and you talked about what you, um, what you do, as far as acting and modeling. Talk a little bit about that connection. How do you feel like you connect with the different roles that you've played, the people you're on set with? Where do you find that? I live in the moment myself, personally. I don't like try to like think of what I'm gonna do later. I mean, that's my whole life. I've never like thought ahead. I don't have goals. I just have always just been in the moment. Like when I went to Japan, my agent said, oh, there's some people here who wanna see you at the agency. I went in, they said, oh yeah, we're from Tokyo and we want you to come to Tokyo. And I was like, okay, you know what I mean? I've like, never planned anything. I just, every day is that. So in my acting, I think it's the same thing. I know, I know it is. I mean, I just, do my research on the character. I have a very specific ritual before I do anything. I get in the bathtub with candles, I take my script, I read the lines, and then I put it away, and I just kind of soak in the character. Like I think about all the different things that that character would do or eat or who, how they feel about their parents or what they feel about religion. So I spend an hour or two sometimes in the tub just thinking about who that character is and what they are and then the lines I memorize them and then every time I do anything I just look into the eyes of the person that I'm working with and I don't speak until I feel the need to speak and that's how I work. I'm loving your process because it is so 
the way you said it was, meaning you just kind of take everything for now. And including with the scripts, it sounds very meditative and just very in the moment and very present. Yeah. And so you kind of meditate on it and then you manifest it and you just do it. That's pretty I, much it. I like the way you explain it. <laughs> I love it. But that's what, I mean, that's basically what you said to me. At least that's what I heard yeah, anyways. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, that is exactly what I do. I mean, yeah. I think that's a beautiful way of being. And I think that it's very, um, being present is undervalued. Um, and I think that people think being somewhere is being present. But it's so far beyond that. I agree, hundred percent. What um, what does being present really mean to you? Just being in the moment and being able to be accessible and be vulnerable. I mean, that's. I think that's something that most people aren't. Most people aren't vulnerable, and accessible. And I. I mean, people just go. You talk to everybody. Everybody tells you everything. I'm like, yeah, because I don't judge people. I just listen to what they're saying, and if I have something that I can do for them or advice that I can give them or just listening to them if that's what they need. No, I think you just have to be vulnerable. Being vulnerable is such a big thing. It really is and I, I just, people are so closed off, especially now with COVID and you know, it gets, it gets crazy. People are so closed off and they've got their own opinions and their own reality and they're not open to hearing anybody else it and it's very i don't know i find that sad i think that we get afraid to have our feelings and we get afraid to open up to others for fear of judgment exactly what you said which is the whole motivation for doing these interviews and sitting down talking with you and others that have shared their stories it is an attempt to connect and to understand one another and respect each other as human beings that we share the planet with it's so important it's just so important it's funny because I do teach an acting class and a lot of times these actors come to me and I, at first I think they're really good and then when we st I start giving them material that they're not comfortable with or that they don't know and they, they're they so afraid to just like be there, just be in that moment and I keep saying it's called live in the moment acting class for a reason because you need to live in that moment. Memorize your lines. Throw, don't make any choices. Just look at the person across from you. And it's so difficult with actors who you would expect would be able to be really open to that. And it's a really hard thing to get them to do because of all their personal things that they've got going on inside of them. And they're afraid that other actors are going to judge what they're, the choices they're making or, you know, that they want to please somebody, me or somebody else in the class or a casting director. And it's like, that's not how you get a job acting. You get a job acting because you become vulnerable and you make other people believe that that's that moment happening right now. And I mean, it's, it's weird when actors don't get that concept to me. I mean, for normal people, it's difficult, but for an actor, you'd think they'd have access to that. And they, you know, some of them, it takes a long time to get it. When they do, it's like so exciting. It's exciting for them. They're like, oh my God, I get it. I can just be me. Like, yeah, that was the whole thing. Be you, just be you in that moment. And it's hard for people to allow themselves to just be in a moment. Well, and it's like you said, manifesting on it and then allowing it to yeah. just open up and be there. And I, I loved that. And that, I think, can be applicable to a lot of things, not just the acting world. I think if you manifest on what you want, maybe maybe not in Kim's world in terms of goals, because she said she doesn't have any. So <laughs> <laughs> I do now. I'm learning. That's why I got a journal. I'm learning to, like want things and plan you know like not necessarily plan but to say this is what I want to happen in my life and then the weird thing is within three days of writing something in my journal one to three days it happens I mean big things have been happening and for me that was a really big awakening I was like whoa I wrote that for three days and I on the third day I said I want this exactly to happen today and it did. And I was like, what? Oh my gosh. I mean, I was calling everybody and I was taking pictures in my journal. I'm like, look, oh my God, I wrote it this morning at nine o'clock. At 11.09, it happened. And they're like, Kim. I was like, no, it did. It did. I'm mean, like, for me, that's exciting that you can manifest things yourself. Like, that's 
crazy. But I think it is exciting, and I think it is true, and I'm glad you're excited about it because <laughs> that's the deal, though. And I would be willing to bet that even though you know you say you don't set forth this plan to go achieve X, Y, Z, you just like to live in the moment and leave each day and be a little not whimsical, but you know, a little kind of um, spontaneous. Yeah. And I think that that's a good thing, but also to know that when you think about something that you do want, it's okay to want it. And it's okay to put it out there into the universe so they are, the universe can give it to you. Yeah. And I think that's super cool. It is really cool. What made you start um, the acting class? Um, well, I was sitting around one day and I was like, what should I do? Like, I was helping people with auditions all the time and I thought I should start a business. And so I started last minute audition. I, all I did, I, literally, I said, I'm going to call it last minute audition because that's what you do. You look for somebody to help you with your last minute audition. And so I started a website and I put it on Yelp. And within like a month, I had people calling, I mean, celebrities calling me. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And then over the course of about a year, they started saying, you should have a class. You should have a class. So that's, I thought about it, thought about it. I didn't really want to teach acting. So it took me about three years actually to get the class started. I rented the Secret Rose Theater and I started classes and we were there for about a year and then the pandemic hit. So I did it online for the last year for free. And, um, but I always, 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 even when I was in person, I would give um, veterans, four veterans and four disabled people a month of free class and included, you know, footage for their reel. And usually they would stay for three or five months, however long they wanted to stay, because I just couldn't charge that. Here she goes, wanting to help people. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's kind of, it just happens, but I'm learning. I'm learning that my, I have value, like a dollar value also. Like I can't just keep doing that all the time. But um, the yeah. class has been really good for me too, because I get to see, it, may, it helps me as an actor also, I will say that. You know, you talked about value. I did an interview um, with Omari, and we talked about value in that interview also, and it was about giving time um, to people for their films, you know, acting in his friend's films or production stuff, and he, it was almost like if you're giving it to them for free, they're taking advantage, and they don't value the work that you're putting in to help them be successful, and your time. And I always say, even to my husband, that my time is the most valuable thing that I can give. Yeah. And um, I like to help people too. <laughs> yeah. For me, helping other people with their films, people help me with my things. So, I mean, yeah. There was one actor though in one of my films called Animals um, that has won 11 awards this year. I am like beside myself. I, it's, it's a short that I wrote as a proof of concept and we shot it in five hours. I spent $400. And it was sitting for three years and I finally went, you know, there's not much going on. Might as well put it in a couple of festivals. And the first one, it swept it. Best thriller, best director, best actor, best supporting actress, me. And I mean, it just, it blew me away. So I kept putting it in, it keeps winning. Well, I'm so excited for you and all the things that you have going on. Thank you. And all of the many facets and outlets that you've managed to dabble into and succeed with. And congrats on all the awards on the film. That's so Thank exciting. You. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> There's one over there you can't show it, but it's right there on the, it looks like a funny little Oscar on the Oh, mantle. very cool. I do see. Next very. to my mini Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, I am. I'm super happy for you, and I'm super Thank grateful you. for your time Thank today. You. Sitting down to with you. me. Yeah, absolutely. And um, sharing your story. Is there anything that you wanted to share that we may not have touched on before I ask you our final question to close out this amazing conversation? There is one more thing. I have the most amazing son and daughter-in-law in the whole entire world. My son, if I think he changed my entire life. He changed my perspective on everything. I was kind of a crazy model slash actress, you know, going all over the world, just being. And he, he didn't change my vulnerability or my spontaneity, but he definitely changed my life, and he made it so much better. So, my little Zachy. <laughs> I love hearing that. He's amazing. Very cool. So, tell me what... Because you say he changed your life. 
What do you mean by that? Well, we were alone for a, a major part of his life. Um, I left his dad when he was a year and a half old, so I raised him by myself for the most part. Um, and he was just like, he was a little angel. He just, he was so perfect. He started chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo when he was like two years old on his own by himself. He wanted a Gahanzen and wanted to sit in the corner and chant. And there was just something really like special about him. And he's, he's just a really special guy. He just really is. I adore him. We're best friends and he's my son, you know, he, I, just everything about him. He's like, you know, he's just amazing. He's just an amazing guy. I love seeing that in your eyes and in your smile. You like just have this complete glow when you talk about him. Yeah, he's, he's, I married them. That picture. I, I actually, yeah, I actually did. I married them. He, uh, he goes, we're going to get married August 20th. I was like, okay, I'll perform the wedding. He's like, no, mom, it needs to be legal. <laughs> It's gonna be legal. I'm an ordained minister. His mom. It needs to be legal, legal. I was like, it is legal, legal. So he let me do it, and it was like I didn't cry. I did not cry, but it was the most beautiful moment. It's like, just he's such a dream. He's made my life just so full. So, <laughs> such a proud mama. I love it. I I I think it's so great that. Um, I have a good relationship with both of my parents also and my I say the same thing that my mom's my best friend. Um, and so I, I love that and I totally can like feel the connection because I have the same. That's so cool. So well I appreciate so you sharing that. So I could sit and talk to you forever and I could sit and look at these adorable <laughs> cats forever. But um, I do want to ask you as we close out this conversation and our time together, as you are out, whether it's on set, teaching your classes, um, out with friends, out walking, not the cats, but <laughs> just out walking. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to hold up a sign, this is one thing about you, what would you want people to know about Kim? I'm really happy. 